what else is there. Do not stop thinking. Do not think that you've got the final answer. Do not rest. goes back a, a long way um, it was I originally uh, originally started out uh, you know being you know very uh, you know very studious um, but I was you know always into literature and, and philosophy I was never a scientist right? I in fact at school I hated science I did no science I did the minimum amount of maths I could get away with I was very much into philosophy and literature and things like that and I read this book called Physics and Philosophy. And it was one of those, I mean, it's what you describe as a sliding door moment. It was like, it shifted everything. It made me realize that, uh, you know, the way I was thinking was very closed and I just need to open my mind and realize that different ways of thinking, not just the, not just the us, not just the humanities, but science uh, could have something to contribute. And I actually became a physicist. I mean, I like I deep dived into uh, into physics, and it made me realize then that uh, the the biases you have about the way you think are actually self imposed. And and I thought, okay, we can we can train our minds to do different things, to to learn not just new tricks, but whole new ways of thinking. And ever since then, I have focused my career on doing different things at different times. So I left the holy grail of physics. Uh, I decided to soil my hands with commerce, which is something I thought I would never do. Uh, I, uh, in fact, I became, I did my master's in finance of all things, chief analyst at Citibank. And then I moved into manufacturing, moved into retail and publishing. Like basically in doing the opposite of what we suggest that people uh, do with their career. You know, we typically suggest stick with your strengths. You want a good, strong career, stick with your strengths. That's, you know, that's a, a way to success. And for most people, I'd recommend that. For me, it wouldn't have worked. I was always looking at the shadow areas of my brain, the, the part of the parts of my mind that didn't, uh, that I wasn't using. And because I cannot draw. I seriously cannot draw, yet I had a graphic studio with the uh, with the publishing house and in fact turned it into an animation studio which is all about graphics. I got no graphic ability, but I learned it. In fact, I learned creativity. I learned how to make my mind uh, shift. And that is actually the heart of the agility that you described, right? Because there is no one way. There is uh, always the ability to shift. Uh, and so it's really that book physics and philosophy that started from where I was very philosophical and thought okay you can there are other ways of seeing and that is really the beauty of it new ways of seeing the one question that absolutely fuels and drives is the question what else is there the problem that most people have is they stop too early looking for answers. Once they, once they have, a, have a, uh, a picture of things, they think, okay, this is how it works, uh, and it looks like it, it, it's right, looks like it's complete, you stop thinking and you stay with that. But one thing I've learned, there is always more. The one word that drives me is more. Right? There is always more, there is always something else. And so I'm always asking, what else is there? Whatever, whatever the you know, whatever the field of investigation, uh, you know, when I was uh, when I was in animation, I thought, okay, we're doing it this way, but maybe there's other ways. In fact, uh, we were able to produce animations at basically half the cost of the industry, half the cost of the rest of the industry, because we just looked at different ways of doing things. We always thought there is another way, and 
And so even with the even with the work we do at uh, at SIC, we think, uh, okay, we we've got a good package here. You know, we've we've got a good product, we've got a good package. Our delivery is good. Okay, what else is there? What more can we do? What other questions can we ask? What other what other things can we investigate? And it is in fact everything that we have uh, developed with SIC comes from that question. And one of the reasons why I gel with uh, with SIC so much is that they completely get that. There is uh, there is no such thing as okay this is it with uh, with with speakers institute in general uh, including the corporate art right there's always what else is there you know this 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 might surprise you I've actually done some past life stuff with someone now this this is this is too big for a lot of people I right? like I'm the physicist like you know I most people don't get that I would do that. And in actual fact, uh, as a scientist, I keep my, my, my mind open. Uh, you know, there's no evidence that there are past lives, but there's no evidence that there's not. So it's an open question. And someone suggested to me, like, you know, they were telling me their own, uh, you know, you know, learned this about past life and it explains this. And I thought, OK, that's interesting. Let me uh, let me try that myself. And so I went to this guy who was actually when I was still in Sydney, he was in a uh, guy in uh, near Cronulla. And he was a like, real mystical sort of guy. And I said, okay, um, tell me about my past lives. And he said, you, look, you looked and you know, went all you know, glazed eyed and stuff like that, you know, part of the show. And he said, actually, I can't find any. It's like as a spirit, you don't come and go with different lives. It's like you've always, it's like you've always been here, but not here. Like you are, a, he described me as a bridge. He said, you are a bridge. You are a translator. And I did not want to admit it, Craig, but I thought, my God, that sums me up. That has that absolutely nailed me. Because if you were to ask, what is the, uh, you know, what, what's the one, you know, what is my main skill? Okay, first I like you know, being a dad. I, you know, I, I love being a dad. Right? But in terms of professionally, the one thing I have, uh, I explain things better than anyone. My thing, I explain things better than anyone. I'm my whole passion has been about explaining things about taking complicated things and making them simple, taking things in one language, putting them into another language. Um, even like it's about, that's that's the heart of the clarity thing that I get into, you know, about, the, you know, clear thinking, because it's about explaining things. And that is really a matter of translation. Ever since my earliest days, I was always good at languages. Like in the, you cannot see the bookcases, but they're just uh, on that side, just off camera. There's um, books about seven different languages which I just get into. It's about translation. Uh, and and so whenever there is a, uh, you know, whenever there's a, uh, a question to be asked, I thought, okay, I will, I will always find not just a way of answering it, but a way of answering it that is accessible to people who are completely outside of that field. Right. So, as you know, I've, I've done many different things in my time. Many, you know, like gone from, uh, you know, science to finance, manufacturing, publishing, the arts, whatever. And now I'm communication, influence and future thinking and all these different areas. But there's always been what else is there? And then how do I bring that to the people? I've never been one of those people that's, you know, left, uh, you know, that has only appealed to the, you know, the, the top intellectual people who, who will get it. My thing has always been bringing it to the people to, uh, to, to translate it. So in answer, in answer to your question, I'm a bridge. According to that guy, I'm a bridge. My whole thing has been about, you know, the, the hands across the ocean, the, uh, the, the making uh, obscure things or distant things accessible to, to anybody. That's probably the most obscure answer you'll ever get to that question, but you know, I guess that's that's my thing. <laughs> ah, and that is, and that is, there is more. There what is. else is there? Seriously, it is the, and it's the, and you can see the complete congruence in that, right? The question that drives me is the question that I always, uh, not necessarily say explicitly, but there is always that underlying implication. What else is there? Do not stop thinking do not think that you've got the final answer do not rest right what else is there i mean sure you've got to settle on a direction and push your uh, push your troops forward in that direction and stay consistent but then you as the leader need to have vision beyond the vision that you give to others you need to see the next step beyond 
everybody else's next step. And that's where the what else is there comes from. That is, you know, that is the ultimate, uh, that is the ultimate envision. So if there's any one thing that I would uh, that I'd give to leaders, it is to just never stop asking what else is there. I thought it was summed up nicely by Warren Tate in uh, uh, a debrief session just I think this week where he was saying, you know, the thing I like is there's no egos. You know, like we we work together and we've like we've been working together for a while, which is always helpful. You know, we can almost finish each other's sentences. You know, if one person's video goes down, you know, one of one of us can just jump in immediately with the slides online and take over. Uh, and so that that works really nicely, but even beyond the uh, the working together as a team because we understand each other, it is the regard we have for each other, and you know putting the uh, you know, putting what we're trying to do above our own egos. So we will we will you know one day Warren will be uh, you know chief facilitator, another day it'll be me, another day it'll be Jessica, and we're looking forward to other people being. Uh, being chief facilitators and we you know we'll just be part of the team and that's that's part of it is the it's first of all i mean i'd say it's the lack of ego uh where we're doing our best and we do our thing we take our part and and that's what we love there's one more thing that i that i i like a lot and that is and to me that is the art of being a professional and that is we never leave people wondering Right. We, you know, we have we always have questions in our mind. Like I've always got this: what else is there in my mind? Okay, so that's you know questions in my mind that drives me. But as far as how we uh, treat our clients, we make sure there are no questions in their mind. We never leave them wondering. And so, I mean, in fact, even you as my client, in effect, right? If you ask me to do something, then you stop asking questions. You think, okay, is he going to be all right? You know, will he will he be there? Will uh, you know? Will uh, how will it go? There's no question in your mind. I make sure that you ask me to do something and then you stop thinking about it. You can stop thinking about it until the moment I'm delivering and then it just happens. Same thing with your clients where, okay, when they first, you know, when they, you know, our very first gig for a new client, you know, they're always watching us, that sort of thing. But really quickly they stop, you know, they think, okay, they've got this. And so they can give us a gig and they stop thinking about it. They stop being interested. In, the, in that sense, because they know whatever they, we ask and whatever they ask us to do, we've got it. And so to me, the you know what I really dig about the relationship with uh, that we have with each other in SI, SIC and the relationship we have with our clients is we never leave each other wondering. There is never a question in uh, each other's minds. We know whatever happens, we've got it. <laughs>